Hello fellow Chartists, welcome to my YouTube channel, I am the Chartist and today in the S&P 500 we had a very healthy price action type of day this is what we like to call basing aka consolidation alright after a strong up move because last week we had like uh, four straight green days All right, I think it went as low as 414, 416 ish around there it was the support line of the triangle pattern and it jumped about $40, $30. I can't do math right now. It's been a long day for me. But from about $4.16 all the way up to $4.45-ish. Okay, that's a big move to the upside. So today, we had a consolidation type of day. Very healthy. It gave the SPY some time to breathe. Let the RSI on the 4-hour um, chart cool down a bit because it was pretty overbought. You know, so we saw some good stuff. I know if, if you was a bull or a bear... And you was biased you might not have had a good time today market may have faked you out a little bit uh but if you played it level to level from resistance to support support to resistant played it level to level unbiased you might have in theory had a profitable day okay support levels were pretty good today um but before we talk about that it's the flow sentiment very bearish okay 90 percent in puts uh 10 percent in the calls goodness gracious 158 1,350 contracts compared to 16,000. Uh, big money is still uh, bearish to the downside. Okay, now despite the bullish price action, the, despite the basing and not much drop to the downside, there's a lot of money heading to puts. And for people that's wondering, well, it, we, there's no way to really know. Okay, we can theorize. Maybe the big money knows something that we don't know. And in, in the near future, SPY is just going to take a big dump. And then the big money is going to make their money, okay? Or it could be hedges, head funds just hedging, okay? So it's not nothing to really know. That's why we have to uh, allow the price action to be the number one indicator. You got to combine this info with the price action. And also, a lot of these contracts are about one month, three months out as far as expiration dates go. So anyways, so that there you go on the flow sentiment. Pretty bearish, okay? We're going to go to my Discord. All right, so this was my plan today. All right, last week we had four big green days for SPY. As I said, one of these days was a break of the multi-month downtrend line from January. This week, bulls need to show more follow-through because there's still lots of levels SPY needs to break, okay? We, bulls still have a lot of work to do. All right, my plan today, I have first support at 442 to 443 zone. And as long as it holds, I am favoring we test 449 to 450. Parentheses 446 must clear, okay? And then we'll get a pullback there, and then uh, 453.5, which is my 61.8 retracement level. Obviously, 449, we never even touched that level because we never cleared 446. That was a 200-day moving average, okay? And, of course, I got a bearish scenario. Uh, 449 to 450 zone was the low back in December, all right? If 442 to 443 fails, we drop to 440 to 441, then 437. All right, so remember, I always say the best time to turn bears is when we lose a support and we play it level to level. If we lose a support and it gets back tested as resistant, or we get a strong move to the downside, like you see in a big body candle, most likely we're going to go and test the next support. And if that support fails, we'll test the next support and so on. Okay, same drill as always. All right, so below 437, I would have been very bearish. That would have been. The false breakout of the triangle pattern, okay? Below 437, I'll favor lower lows, maybe another $10, $20 drop, maybe even more than that, okay, for the SPY, if we lose 437, all right? So, but we got to play it level to level, like I always say, okay? So, we take a look at the SPY, all right? It opened here, opened around 444.34, and you see these two white lines? That's my resistance level. I had resistance at 445 to 446. I had a zone. It went to that zone. The first candle, you see a wick right here, a nice long wick. So that's selling pressure. Okay? That tells you SPY might not be ready to take out this resistance zone yet. And obviously with the next candle, that confirms it. Uh, and you'll see a, a bearish engulfing candle there. Okay? So boom. Big rejection right there. And then where did it drop to? This candle right here went as low as 442.77, okay? So these two blue lines, that's my support zone, the 442 to 443 support zone. That was my first support zone, and it hit it, 
and it bounced all the way back up to the resistance zone okay level to level price action trading works guys all right remember the chart is this strategy all right it's not anything i made up or anything it, you just long at support short at resistant that's it okay very simple doesn't mean it's easy but it's simple okay maybe it's a little too simple anyways so yeah when it comes down to the support level what you want to see is you want to see some buying pressure or what you see here is a bullish engulfing candle boom that's your sign to get in we're right next to the next resistant all right so when is the best time to short you short at resistant it was basing went up to resistant you see some selling pressure a little bit of buying pressure was basing now this candle this big red candle is around 12 30 okay i alerted my group about some interesting activity on the the options flow okay oh here it is around 12 28 p.m so two minutes literally two minutes before the move happened i let the group know 94 percent in puts right now that's crazy and then i showed them a bunch of orders of puts that came in these orders had like this one was 6.5 million to the downside you know in premium i mean you know betting to the downside we saw all these puts come in and i let the group know and boom we're at resistant big orders of puts coming in i don't know what they found out but all i know is we're at resistant and look at that big move to the downside big rejection and where did it go it broke through this support level okay broke through this support level 442 to 443 zone broke through that and then this green zone right here these green lines that's my next support at 440 to 441 it came right into the zone right there as you can see and then boom started pushing its way back up to the next resistant from support to resistant resistant to support and as you can see it ended the day it ended the day just moving to the upside as you see with this blue line that looks like a bull flag okay so after a big strong move to the upside some consolidation some chop sideways let the rsi cool down type of stuff very healthy because if we you know you zoom out a bit this is a 15 minute chart but even if you zoom out you can still see the you know the up move okay this orange line right here that was a support level of the triangle pattern you see that up move that's a big up move and and when the spy goes up it takes the stairways up okay it's not just gonna go straight up all right you can see here it moves up consolidates move up consolidates moves up consolidates moves up consolidates and it works well with our levels you see it can working with our lines here those, those are support and resistant levels okay so obviously after a strong move up like that you want to see some consolidation to build strength for another up move and it just so happens we got that rejection from the 200 day moving average so if we go to the daily chart okay i'm just gonna move these it's a lot of stuff all right go to the daily chart you can see that that purple line right there that's a 200 day moving average we got the rejection from there that's where it starts basing okay so let's see if i do my fibonacci levels i start from the high this is the january high okay so january high to the low in february and you can see not only did we reject it from the um the 200 day moving average around that same area at 445.3 is the 50 percent retracement level so we had an area of confluence okay so about 445.3 to 446 was the zone all right and the spy struggled to break that today okay it held above you know some supports 437 support being the, the biggest one okay 437 loses that's when i will switch to bearish okay but as of right now like i said and i showed on the 15 minute chart when we zoomed out you can just see it's just consolidating it's very healthy all right we just need the spot the spy just needs to uh break this 50 percent retracement level and the 200 day moving average which is currently uh uh 446.7 cents okay so if the spy can break above that that'll put the 61.8 retracement level in play which is at 453.57 okay now keep in mind in downtrends in strong downtrends be you know the initial move to the downside it gets a rally and usually the rally ends around the 50 to 61.8 retracement level before it it takes another leg to the downside okay you can check uh 
in the 2020 uh, when COVID happened and the spy crash, the 2020 crash in March and stuff. You can check that. All right. If you talk from the low and the high, you can see that with using your fifth levels, you can see that before spy went on its second down, second leg to the downside, it retraced. I think it was either the 50 or 61 point retracement level. And the same can be said back in the uh, in the 2018, back when, in 2018 when spy dropped. Okay, so with what my point is, the 50 to 61.8 retracement level are going to be important levels that SPY needs to break above. Okay, because one of these levels, if we get a strong rejection there, that could be the beginning of the next downtrend to the downside. I know a lot of people are eyeballing 400 right now. Okay, and there is a gap down there. All right, now if we do break above 453.57, all right. First of all, we got to recapture the 200-day moving average. But assuming we recapture that and we do break above 453.57, which is a 61.8 retracement level, both still have more work to do. Because you can see here in the high in February 2nd and the high in February 10th, you, you see a double top right there. Okay, That's going to be a tough level for us to for SPY to crack. That's about 458-ish. Okay, about 458. All right. So if we do break above 453.57, which is a big win for the bulls, we still got to deal with 458. And then above that, it's a 78.6 retracement level at 465, 470, and so on. Okay, maybe all-time highs again, okay? So SPY, despite the bullish price action from this multi-year trend line, you know, if you just look at this multi-year trend line and break out, you're going to think, oh, it's bullish. And it is bullish. However, you got to look at other things as well. The 200-day moving average, we're still getting rejections there. We're still not holding above the 50% retracement level. We're still, you know, we still have a lot of ceilings to crack through before we can really get comfortable and say, okay, we're, this bull market is going to continue. Okay, because if we look at the weekly chart, guys, and you zoom out, we are technically in a bull market. And this last week was actually, that's a bullish engulfing candle. Candle, holy moly. Yeah, that, that's a bullish engulfing candle. And, you know, besides the bullish engulfing candle, the breakout, obviously. But anyways, so what I'm saying is, bulls still got a lot more work to do before we can get very comfortable. Now, if we get a strong rejection from any of these resistance levels, like today was not a strong rejection, guys. It was just basin. So for what I want to see, it's a bearish engulfing candle. A nice big body candle, like one of these. Right here, one of these red ones right here. Yeah, nice big body candle. I would love to see it. That will give me a sign. Oh, the selling pressure is coming, and we're going to head down lower, okay? From re a resistant level, off of a resistant level, okay? Off of one of these resistant levels that I mentioned. And of course... If we lose 437, that's the 38.2 retracement level. Also where we broke out last week. That's going to be a very important level. We lose that level, I'm favoring more downside. Okay, we got some minor support around here, around 433 and stuff. But listen, I think if we lose 437, we're going to get another 10, 20, maybe more dollar, down, dollar move to the downside. Okay, I know bears like to hear that. Okay, but I'm only saying that and I'll only be, believe that if the price actually tells me. Which is, like I said... We lose 437, or we get a nice bearish engulfing candle off of one of these support levels. Until then, I'm going to continue to be objective and play it level to level. For tomorrow, because right now we're taking the stairways up. All right, and we're doing low basing today, which is f perfectly fine and healthy. But for tomorrow, to be bullish, we want to see that 446 level get cleared. That's a 200 day moving average. If SPY clears that, guys, I recommend. Not trying to be too bold, not trying to be too biased or bearish, whatever. You know, just play the price action because that would put my 449 to 458 uh, price, tar uh, price target in play, or res next resistant level. Okay? Now, that is the low of the December low. All right? As mentioned before. All right? That's the yellow line, that low zone right there, around 450, uh, around 449 to 450. That's my next zone. That's my next resistant level if we clear the 200-day moving average. Okay? And I may look to short around that level too. All right? Quick quick scout, level to level type of stuff. Okay? Not saying I'm bearish at that level. I'm just saying I may look for a short entry at that level. 
You don't have to copy me. Do your own thing. Or you can copy me, but still remember who, who told you to do that. You did, not me. Anyways. Okay, guys. So, but if we clear 450, then I'll favor the 61.8 retracement level, which is another big test. As I said before, this level is you, a rejection from this level is usually where the next uh, big down leg move, whatever you call it, begins. Okay, the next trend move, down move, or next leg of the down move. You get what I'm saying, guys? Sorry, I had a long day. All right, so just remember those resistant levels, 446. Above that puts 449 to 450 in play. December low. And then above that, 453.5, 61.8 retracement level, and then 458. We'll just play it level to level. If we break 458, then we'll talk more about the next levels. But until then, those are the next levels we need to watch for. Okay, I'll be bearish if we get rejection from one of these levels. I want to see a bearish engulfing candle. I will be bearish if we lose the 437 support level, the 38.2 retracement level, that's what it is. Okay, guys? So, follow the price action. I know some of you guys are bearish. I know some of you guys are bullish. This is how the charters trades. He trades level to level. You know, for me, my biggest thing is if you're a bear, at least short from resistance. If you're a bull, at least short from support. Okay? That's my biggest thing is having a strategy that gives you an edge. All right? Here's the VIX. As I've been saying for quite some time, the VIX looking bearish, guys. It's looking bearish. And the five-day moving average is crossed below the 50-day. You know, obviously, we lost this green trend line right here that's been around since early January. We lost that. That's official break below. And we also, also lost the 78.6 retracement level at 23.74. Okay, guys. So tomorrow, look for a back test of these levels as resistant. If the, if the VIX can get back above... 24.16 i'd be a little more bullish because that's a, a recapture and that could be a false breakdown scenario that's a possibility and if the vix have room to go up then the spy have room to go down okay but if this breakdown holds if this breakdown holds 24.16 gets treated as resistant and rejects that's a sign that the vix is going to head down to more to the next support level at the 200 day moving average at 20.5 all right so if the vix he heads down lower there's a sign that the spiral head up higher. Okay, guys, I hope that made sense. I hope you found that helpful. Triple Q, um, just like the spy is just basing, all right? Last week, it closed at the 50-day moving average, just under the 38.2 retracement level at 352.64, just under it. Today, it touched that level, reject a little bit, but pretty much just chopped, okay? Like I said, with the spy, you know, Last week, we had a pretty big move from the downside to the upside, okay? So, some consolidation is pretty, uh, it's healthy. So, the best time to turn bears, like I always say, is if we lose the support level. So, the five-day moving average is at 342.9. Uh, Definitely watch the five-day moving average. Uh, and then the 23.6 retracement level at 339.3. .3. If we lose that, that'll put 330 in play, which is support of this trend line right here this green trend line and if we break below 330 that's a false breakout false breakouts are very bearish guys okay speaking of false breakouts dow jones had a false breakout okay we had a breakout of this green trend line last week today it closed within it so it looks like it's not strong enough to give us a strong breakout just yet okay the good news is that it still managed to close above the 50-day moving average, okay? 50-day moving average is currently at 345.17, and Dow Jones closed at 345.44. Not a strong close, but hey, it still is, right? And it managed to bounce off the 5-day moving average. So we're still seeing some signs of buying pressure, like Triple Q, like the SPY, is just consolidating, it's basing, all right? We want to see Dow Jones get back above 346.12 to be bullish, Puts 350, the 300-day moving average in play, then 351.64, 61.8 retracement level, and above that is 359.5, okay? So, like I said, we'll play level to level, above 346.12, we start with that level first. Above that, bullish. Below that, bearish. We'll keep it that simple. IWM was in back test mode today. Unlike Dow Jones, it did not give us a false breakout, okay? We had a breakout this green trend line last week, okay? Green trend line is from... November's high connects to January's high, and yes, uh, last Friday we had a breakout. Today we back tested that level as support and held above. This is a good sign. So as long as the breakout level hold, as long as we're above 204.5, the next resistance level is 
That's the next price target. And then 216.4. Okay. So in breakout mode, we saw follow through. We want to see some more follow through. But if we break below 204, that's a false breakdown. Uh, that's a false breakout. And that's bearish. Okay. We got to be willing to change our sentiment based on the price action. The price action is always changing. Here's Tesla. Uh, recapture the 50-day uh, moving average and also the 38.2 retracement level. Treated that level as a support. It was at 908.55. That will be tomorrow's support. So the next resistant, it actually found some resistance around the neckline of this inverse head and shoulder pattern, okay? Around 341 to 348 zone, okay? So we want to break above th uh, 948, excuse me. So let me say that again. Tesla got this inverse head and shoulder. The neckline is around 948 to 941, okay? So we want to see a break above 948. To put 972.7 in play, that's the 50% retracement level. And then above that is 1,000.36. Now, if we lose uh, 908.55, you know, that's the best time to turn bears. We lost the support. That's a false breakout. And then to put the downside back in play, we have support around 882. 200-day moving average is at 852.6 and then 829. Okay? But as long as support holds, as long as we're above 908.5, I'm favoring more upside that we can break through 948 and then get to 972.7 okay apple showing some good price actions a good bullish price action okay last week we recaptured the 20-day moving average i mentioned that the next price target is the 50-day moving average we touched that today saw some a little bit of rejection but overall we had an update from last week okay price action is bullish so obviously for tomorrow we need a break the 50-day moving average at 166.46 now it could change a little tomorrow but if we break above that, let's say above 166.5, above that we'll put 169.6 in play. That's the breakout level of this yellow bull flag. Above 169.6 is a bullish breakout and it will put all-time highs back in play. Follow the price action, guys. Well, and, and to be bearish, I got to acknowledge the bearish price action, okay? If we get a strong rejection from the 50-day moving average. Like I said, a bearish engulfing candle. I want to see one of these big body candles. That's a sign of more downside. If we lose the support, like the 20-day moving average currently at 161.22. If we lose that 20-day moving average, that's a good sign. We'll see more downside. Okay, guys. Bitcoin, uh, which it's still look like it's still coiling over here. Still in the triangle pattern. All right. Barely holding above the 50-day moving average. It, 50 days currently at 40.5K. If we lose that support level... We'll probably probably come down to support this triangle pattern currently at 35.7k. If we lose 35.7k, that's a bearish breakdown, and 28.7k is in play. Okay, so 40.5k must hold to keep upside in play. 44.k and then 45.1k and above 45.1k will recapture the multi-year trend line, and that's the only time that I will be bullish on the Bitcoin. Okay, guys, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like it, please like it. Please subscribe. Comment below. Do whatever you want. But just thank you, guys. See, talk to you all soon.